as we begin 2013, God is doing something within His church. Not just this church, not just this congregation, but the church universal. I believe God is beginning to call us into a real life Christianity. You know, when Jesus first walked this earth, that was His message. Out of the religiosity that you have known your entire life, and come into a real understand a real relationship with God your creator that was his message and i believe that's his message today that's the message that he has for his church today as well he's calling us to be christians not to be church goers not to be people who talk about church or 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 any of those things but people who are truly living a lifestyle of Christianity. People who are going to truly be like Him. And that's what God is calling us. But the question today is, how are we going to respond to that call? Are we going to keep doing what we've always done? Or are we real about our faith and real about our relationship with God? Are we going to begin to see this life that we're living as something different? Something real, something tangible, something to be experienced? Or are we just going to continue doing what we've always done? Are we going to talk about Christianity? Or are we going to be Christians? Are we going to read about Christianity? Or are we going to live a Christian life? That's the question today. In other words, are we going to have to, in other words, are we going to be willing to take up our cross? And follow Him. And that's what I want to minister on this evening. I want to be talking about take up your cross. And and we'll be kind of all over the the book of Matthew a little bit and a couple other places. But my main scripture is in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. And that's where I'm going to be tonight. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24 says, Then said Jesus unto His disciples, If any man will come after Me, let him deny himself and take up his cross... And follow me. Heavenly Father, this pray that your spirit would be in this place, that you would speak to your people. And Father God, that you would challenge us to be what you've called us to be, to go beyond mere Christianity, go beyond the norm and the ordinary, but Father God, to reach out into the supernatural and the extraordinary. And Father God, help us to realize that the life that you call us to is not a life of theory. It's not a life of philosophy or even religion. But it's a life of reality lived in you. And Father God, in that life there is peace and there is grace and there is mercy and there is power. And there's even miraculous things that can be done through us if we will simply choose to be what You've called us to be. Now Father God, glorify Yourself this evening as we learn about what it means to take up our cross and follow You. It's in your Son's name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. He says, if you're going to follow Me, you're going to have to take up your cross. If you're going to follow after Him, you're going to have to deny yourself and take up your cross and follow Him. Matthew chapter 10, verse 38 says, He that taketh not his cross and followeth after Me is not worthy of Me. Christ says, if you're not willing to take up your cross, you're not even worthy of Him. You're not even worthy of His sacrifice. You're not even worthy of calling yourself a Christian if you're not willing to take up your cross and follow Him. Not my words, His words. You're not even worthy. You know, that's the kind of people who are going to live their entire life sitting in, in churches all across this nation, all across this world, only to stand before realize that when they do, they're going to say, but didn't we prophesy in your name? And didn't we cast out demons in your name? Didn't we do all these great things for you? And He's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. See, because they were to take up their cross and follow Him. They were too involved in the religious aspect, the rituals, the, the procedures of the religion, but never developed a relationship and really never learned what it meant to take up their cross. And follow him. In Luke chapter 14, verse 27, he says, And whosoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. If you're not willing to take up your cross, you can't be his disciple. It's not 
matter of whether or not you want to be. It doesn't matter even if you want to. If you're not willing to take up your cross, and if you don't take up your cross... You cannot be His disciple. You cannot be His student. You cannot be His follower if you're not willing to take up your cross and follow Him. So what does it mean to take up your cross? Well, I'm going to hearken back to my children's ministry days and, um, and, and, and do a little illustrated sermon tonight. And I want to talk about taking up your cross. See, when Jesus took up His cross... It meant a lot of different things. And I think for the most part, we understand part of this. When Jesus was in the garden, He prayed, not my will, but yet your will be done. And He took up His cross. So in at least the the smallest sense, the cross represents this idea of dying to self. And I think we would all understand that, and I think we would all agree with that. Christianity, taking up our cross, determining to live for Christ, at least in its basic sense, means that we are no longer living for self. We have given up our self, our desires, our wants, in order to do God's will. In order to accomplish His purpose in our life. So the cross, taking up your cross, does mean that. It means that we have made the choice to stop following after what we want and start living for what He wants. So that's part of it. But in the midst of that, we have often forgot that the cross is in fact an instrument of death. Literally. Christ did in fact die on the cross. And especially here in America, we have forgotten that aspect of the cross. We're willing to die to self. We're willing to to put away our wants and our desires. And we're willing to live for God until it comes to the actual death. In other words, the cross represents persecution. I mean, when Jesus was hung on the cross, it was because He was being persecuted. He was being falsely accused. He was being lied upon. and, And charges were being laid against Him. For simply being who He was. And in America, we often forget that Christianity isn't comfortable. Christianity is not easy. And if it is easy, then it's probably because we're not really carrying our cross. See, most Christians today, what they want to do is they want to get their cross, and they want to carry their cross to church, And they want to carry their cross to to conferences. And they want to carry their cross to all these Christian events. But when it comes to going out into public, to their job, to to their workplace, to, to their school, wherever it is, they like to leave their cross in the closet so that they can blend in with the crowd a little bit more. Because the last thing you want is for people to stare at you and to realize that, wait a second, you're some kind of a radical I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine going to school with this? Carrying your cross to school? Walking down the hallway with this and having people look at you like, what in the world? Can you imagine walking into work tomorrow carrying your cross? And people looking at you funny. People looking at you like you've lost your mind. Like you've somehow gone over the deep end. Can you imagine what people would say? about you. The, what people would look at you and say, well, hey, did you see so-and-so this morning? Did you see he was carrying a cross? This guy's crazy. Can you imagine going to the mall with this thing? Can you imagine trying to get into one of those little changing stations and trying to try on your clothes with this thing? See, we don't carry the cross into those places because it's too awkward. It's too weird for people to see us carrying the cross. Because we don't want to be persecuted. We don't want people to talk about us. We don't want people to think that we're somehow radical or crazy or loony or cultish. Because we choose to carry our cross. And I don't mean literally we have to carry this thing around, but I think it's a good illustration. Do we carry our relationship with Christ like this? 
so that it's obvious and evident to everybody that we meet, everybody that we see, everywhere that we go. People realize that there's, there's somebody who's carrying their cross. See, we want to avoid the persecution part of it. But having your cross and carrying your cross is literally a willingness to suffer. Not just to not do what I want to do, but I'll do what God wants me to do. But to literally face the possibility of being persecuted. Facing the possibility of being talked about. Of being imprisoned. Possibly even put to death. Because you choose to carry your cross. And I think those two things are, are partly and very important parts of what it means to carry your cross. And I think if you're not willing to do those things, I don't think you can be His disciple. But I also believe, and perhaps even more so tonight, I think carrying your cross or taking up your cross is about having an understanding that God has a purpose for you. From the foundation of the world, Christ knew that His purpose and His destiny was the cross. He knew exactly why He was born to Bethlehem that day. It was because of the cross. He knew that there was an ultimate destiny for Him. His whole reason for being, His whole reason for life, His whole reason for everything that He had ever done was for this one purpose, and that would be the cross. And He had to be willing to take up that cross. If we're going to live the life, if we're going to live the life that Christ intended for us to live, if we're going to accomplish our destiny, if we're going to achieve our purpose in life, if we are going to be and do the very thing that we were born to be and to do, then we're going to have to take up our cross. The cross represents your purpose in life. The cross represents your destiny. The reason that God created you from the beginning And we have got to understand that. That God is wanting us to accomplish something for Him. And not just anything, a specific something for Him. Being what God created you to be is going to take you laying down your wants and your desires. It's going to require you to face persecution and possibly even death. It's going to require us to take up our cross to achieve that specific purpose. Think of this. Moses. Moses was born for a specific purpose. It was no accident that when all of the persecution began, his mother pl- and placed him in a basket lined it with pitch, and sent him out into the river, praying that God would keep His hand upon him. And then it was no accident that he then was found by Pharaoh's daughter. It was no accident that he found himself in the middle of the desert with a man, a priest of Midian, who knew about the true and living God and taught him about the true and living God. It was no accident that he happened to be chasing after a sheep when God decided to speak to him. From the very beginning, Moses was born for the purpose of delivering his people. But in order to do that, he had to risk everything. He had to risk persecution by going back to Egypt and facing the things that he had done. He was going to have to ridicule from the very people that he was there to help. And he would have to risk even his life to stand before the Pharaoh to tell him, let my people go. He took up his cross, the very thing that he had been born for, his destiny. But it took risk and it took him willingness, a willingness to lay his life down. 
Think about, think about Gideon. I mean, Gideon. He was the least of the least. He, was, he, he seemed like the, the poorest of the poor. You know, even himself, he said, surely there's somebody else who would do a better job than I would. But yet the reason that he was born was to become the deliverer of his people. To deliver them from the hand of the enemy. And he would have to risk everything. He would have to risk persecution from his own family as he would go and tear down the idols. He would have to suffer persecution from his own countrymen. And then on top of that, he would have to have other people laugh at him because here he is getting ready to go against thousands and he's only going to take 300? That's laughable. He would have to live life. But yet, in doing so, in taking up his cross, he achieved his destiny and he set the people free. He accomplished the very thing for which he was born. Same with David. David, he was the red-headed stepchild of Jesse. See, most people think that he just Jesse just didn't want to call him. Do you understand today that Jesse was his stepfather? If you read through scriptures, you'll find that he's not considered Jesse's son. I mean, how many red-headed Jewish boys do you know out there? But yet it says that he was red-headed. It says that he was that, that he was there and he was out in the field watching the sheep when Samuel comes to anoint the new king and he says, call all of your sons and he calls everybody but David. It's not because David was somehow the runt. It wasn't because David was somehow wanted to be left out. It's because they weren't even thinking about David because David wasn't his son. Most people feel like David was either, his father had either died and his mother remarried Jesse. It could have been that maybe he was just illegitimate. We don't know. But we do know this, that David had a purpose. And he had a destiny. And he accomplished that destiny by taking up his cross. He stood before Goliath when nobody else would. He, he risked it all in order to be what he had been called to be. And he destroyed the enemy. He destroyed the giant. He became in, in the service of the king. And in the process, took up his cross once again and faced even death at the hands of the king. He would go into battle. He would do all these things. But all of it ended with one thing and one thing only. The accomplishment of his purpose. The accomplishment of his destiny as he would become king. As he had always been determined to be. Esther. It's no accident that a young Jewish girl would become the queen of the enemy and be in a position to be able to speak for her people and to protect her people. It was her destiny. It was in life. In fact, the Scriptures even tell us it's for such a time as this that she had come to that place. It was her purpose and her destiny. And even she would risk it all. Even she would die to her own will, her own desire, and even put her own life on the line as she would enter into the throne room of the king without invitation. A crime punishable by death. If we are going to be what God has called us to be, we are going to have to take up our cross. We're going to have to realize that God has a purpose and a destiny for us. For you. That He wants you to achieve. But in order to do that, yes, you're going to have to lay down your own will, your own wants, and your own desires when they conflict with what God has for you. But you're going to have to also be willing to die for what God has called you to do. Be willing to lay your life down in order to do that and in order to be what God has called you to be. You've all got a cross to bear. Failing to take up your cross makes you unworthy of Him. Failing to take up your cross disqualifies you from being His disciple. So tonight, I, I want to talk a little bit about what is it, what is it that keeps us from taking up our cross? Because I don't know what your cross is. See, that's the thing. I, I mean, your cross could, is, is not the same as my cross. 
We all have our cross to bear. We've heard that many times. And, and you know, just as an illustration, I mean, your cross is your ministry. Your cross is that one thing that God has called you to do. For me, God has called me to pastor. He's called me to help other people achieve their purpose in life and to get to the place that He wants them to be, to proclaim His Gospel. But understand, we're all called to ministry. Standing behind this pulpit is not the only ministry that there is. Ministry is serving God in whatever capacity that He's called you to. And, and, and maybe tonight, you know, I'll put this up here, maybe tonight you, your, your cross is, is, is kids. Maybe that's your cross. Maybe your cross is ministering to children and, and helping them to understand who they are in God. Maybe your, maybe your ministry, maybe what God is calling you to do is, is to work with couples or homeless people. Or, or, or maybe he's, he's calling you to work with people who, who are addicted to various substances, drugs and alcohol. Maybe, maybe God has put that burden in your heart. That you really feel like those are the kind of people that God draws you to. And that's what is really excites you, is working with those people. Or, or, or maybe, maybe God's called you to go out here into the streets of Indianapolis and begin to, to minister to the prostitutes. And begin to show them there is a way out. That there is a God who loves them. And who has a plan and a purpose for their life. Maybe it's working with women or men. Or, or maybe you've got a heart for the military. Maybe you're the kind of person who realizes that what they do is, is, is extraordinary. And you realize what they do often goes unnoticed. Except on a couple days of the year. When we choose to remember them. Our military need people every single day willing to tell them that you're praying for them, that, that, that are willing to tell them that, that, that God still loves them, and that they are not alone, and that they are not forgotten. They have families who are left here who need ministry, who need people to minister to them. Spouses are serving our country. What has God called you to do? You know, maybe He's called you to prison ministry, or maybe He's called you to help with the poor, or or the. I don't know what your cross is, but you have one. There is a specific cross that God has called you to take up and to carry. There is a specific ministry, a purpose in life that God is calling you to. And I can tell you 100% for sure today, that purpose is not to come into this building and sit in ugly orange chairs. God has not called any of us to sit and soak and sour. He has called each and every one of us to do something of purpose. Something that glorifies Him. And you have a cross to carry. And we have to be willing to take up a cross. If we fail to do it, if we refuse to do it, we're disqualified. If we refuse to do it, we're not worthy. Jesus took up His cross and He accomplished His purpose. But today, so many Christians fail to do that. Very few Christians today are carrying a cross of any type. About the, the best you can do this in, in Christianity today is, is to get someone to help you carry your cross. See, a lot of people, they want to they wanna help with this church. And, and what they do is they say, well, what can I do for you? Or how can I help you? And, and you know, we got things to do around here. But nonetheless, that's still my cross. People will help you carry your cross every now and then. But very few people will take up their own cross, their own ministry, that thing that God has purposed them for, and really run after that. And the reason for that is because oftentimes, oftentimes, we fail to take up our cross because our hands are already too full. We are too busy carrying our mess. We are too busy carrying our junk that it prevents us from carrying our cross. What am I talking about? Well, for instance, 
Sometimes we're so busy carrying our worries. We carry our worries around with us everywhere we go. We're worried about what's going to happen tonight. We're worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. We're worried about what's going to happen next week. We're worried about whether or not we're going to be able to meet that need next month. We're worried about what might happen in our neighbor's issues in our neighbor's life. We're worried about what's happening in our kid's life. We're worried about this and we're worried about that. And all the time we're wringing our hands and we're just at our wits end with worry. And we carry that around with us. Worry about everything. We carry around our cares. The cares of this life. How am I gonna? I I got I got to take care of this, and I got to take care of that, and I got a I got a yard to mow, and I got a I got a a driveway to shovel, and I've got a house to repair, and I got a drain to unclog, and I got a car that needs repaired, and I got a this to do, and I got that to do, and I got this project, and all these cares of this world, and we carry them around, and because we're so busy taking care of those cares and, and and worrying about stuff. We can't carry our cross. We can't even wrap our mind around the thought of doing anything else. We carry around our guilt. We feel guilty about the things that we've done. Guilty about the way we've treated people. Guilty about the things in our past. Guilty about all of this stuff. And because we feel guilty, we won't take up our cross. We're carrying around our stress. Stressed out all the time. Probably because of the worry and the guilt. But we're stressed. 90% of the time we just want to lay in the bed. 90% of the time we feel like, man, I just need a rest. I'm so stressed out. And we carry our stress. We carry our disappointments. All the times when people let us down. All of the times the church let us down. All the times that, that we feel like God let us down. And we carry these disappointments. Oh, I would do something for God, but I tried to do that one time and this happened or that happened. And we carry these disappointments. We carry around our problems. I got problems in my marriage. I got problems in my at work. I got problems with the neighbor. I got problems with my kids. I got problems with my dog. Problems, problems, problems. And we're carrying all these problems around which causes us to worry, which stresses us out. And we're carrying all this stuff around. We carry our past. We, we, we talk about, we believe that Jesus died to make us new creatures, but yet we carry our past with us. Even though He's forgiven it, we can't forgive it. We carry the guilt of our past. We carry this around with us, even though we believe that He is casted as far as the east is from the west. We can't seem to keep it out of our own hand and out of our own mind. And we carry our past around and it and it keeps us from doing what God's called us to do. Because if you had known what I'd done in my past, God couldn't possibly use me. We carry around our sadness. Sad. Sometimes we don't even know why we're sad. We just say, I just want to cry. I'm depressed. I'm sad. And God is calling us to do something great. We're dep- we're... This is happening in the world, or that's happening in the world. Yeah, it's happening in the world because people won't take up their cross. We carry around our weights. All these things in our life that aren't necessarily bad things. They're not bad. They're robbing us from God. And we carry these things around. We carry around our shortcomings. All the things that make us not the greatest person that we should be. All of our shortcomings. All of our reasons why we can't be what God's called us to be. We carry around our failures. All the times that we tried to do something, but we've never been able to get over and we've never been able to get past it. And we failed so many times and God can't possibly use a, a failure. 
And we carry around our burdens. And we carry around our, our debt. We carry around our debt. We're so busy making plans and doing these things and getting involved in these things and i got bills I have to pay now and I've got this I have to do now and, and i got creditors knocking on my door and all this kind of stuff so I have to work and I have to work five jobs to pay for this stuff and, and because of that I'm so busy I can't carry my cross. I don't have time for ministry. I don't have time to do what God's called me to do. We carry around our debt and we carry around our doubt Ooh. We carry around our doubt, all the reasons we couldn't possibly do it. We even carry around our sin. And here we are carrying all this stuff around. We carry it around with us everywhere we go. And we're so busy trying to juggle all of this stuff, we don't even have enough hands to pick up the cross, let alone carry it. We can't even pick it up. How are we possibly going to carry it? i got all this stuff going on in my life. How am I possibly going to work with kids? How am I possibly going to help the homeless? How am I possibly going to be what God's called me to be when I've got all this stuff? We're carrying stuff around everywhere we go. Our hands are so full that we can't be what God's called us to be. It's these things that keep us from being what God's called us to be. It's these things that keep us from achieving our destiny. It's these things that keep us from our purpose in life. And God is calling us to take up our cross. This is why Psalm chapter 55, verse 22 says, Cast thy burdens upon the Lord, and He shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. Cast your cares upon Him. Quit carrying it around and give it to Him. See, you carry this around by your own choice. You carry this around when you don't even have to. He says, cast it upon Me. Give it to Him. The moment you give it to Him, all of a sudden your hands are free. And now, you have the ability to take up your cross. Because you don't have to carry the junk anymore. You don't have to carry the guilt. You don't have to carry the disappointments, the sadness, the shame, the pain, all of that stuff. He says, cast it upon Me, and I will sustain you. Then, you can take up your cross. See, that's the thing most Christians don't understand. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and through 30, it says this, Come unto Me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He says, if you have too much to carry, if you are heavy laden, Come unto Me, and I'll give you rest. He says, you won't have to carry that anymore if you'll simply come unto Me. Give it to Christ, and you won't have to carry it anymore. And most of us love that part about Christianity. I don't have to carry my guilt anymore. I don't have to carry my shame anymore. I don't have to carry my sin. And all of that is true. But we often miss the fact that He doesn't stop there. Because He says in verse 29, take up My yoke upon you and learn from Me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest for your soul. He says, take My yoke. He says, I'll take your burden. I'll take your mess. I'll take your junk. Now you take My yoke. You take my yoke. The yoke is what they would place around the oxen so that they could pull the load. Christ is calling us to pull the load. He is calling for us to take up our cross and follow Him. 
His purpose was to go forth and to preach the Gospel. That's now your burden if you take on His yoke. He was called to set the captives free. That's now your burden if you choose to take His yoke upon you. See, He says, I'll take your mess, I'll take your junk if you'll take My purpose. I'll take your mess if you'll take My ministry. That's what Christ is calling us to do. He frees up our hands, not so that we can go out and have a party and and feel great about ourselves and breathe deep and have good self-esteem. He set us free so that our hands will be able to do what He has called us to do. He takes away everything that keeps us from being what He's called us to be so that we can now be and achieve what He had always intended for us. So that we could take up our cross and follow Him. He took your sin so that you could have life. He took your failure so you could have success. And He took your burden so that you could be free to carry His. Christ knew that we could never carry our cross as long as we were carrying our burdens. So in a great exchange, Christ took what we could not carry so that we could bear His cross, our cross, our ministry, our purpose. Most Christians have the mentality of, I can barely do what I need to do now. How can I possibly get involved in anything else? But Jesus says, my my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Compared to the junk that we put on ourselves, What Christ asks us to carry is easy and light. We put so much stuff on ourself. We put guilt upon ourself. We put shame upon ourself. We put debt upon ourselves. And most of what we carry and we choose to carry around instead of our cross is stuff that we have placed there. We've gotten involved in commitments that we never consulted Christ about. We've gotten involved in contracts that we never prayed about. We bought homes, we bought cars, we bought all this kind of stuff that's now robbing us from the resources that God has for us. And it's causing us to carry around junk just so we, it keeps us from our cross. We burden ourselves with issues and cares because we refuse to lay them down. And as a result, we live under such a heavy burden that we can't possibly live out God's purpose in our life. But if we will learn from Christ and realize that we too have been born for a purpose, a ministry, a destiny, and if we will realize that if we will simply lay that stuff down and refuse to carry it, He says, you'll find peace for your souls. There is nothing more peaceful than knowing that you are doing exactly what God has called you to do. There is nothing that brings more peace and joy than serving God and knowing that you're doing it in His will and that you are exactly where God wants you to be. People can persecute you, and yet you have peace. Because it doesn't matter what they say. Because you know you have a destiny and a purpose. God is calling you to take up your cross and follow Him. What is your ministry? What is God calling you to do? That's the question today. Because God is calling Christians all across this world to get out of their chair and begin to minister to the people around them. To discover their purpose and His plan for their life. And begin to do what He's called them to do. 
What's holding you back? What are you carrying around today that keeps you from being what God's called you to be? What is it that every time you think, Man, I really want to... I really want to do that. I really know God's calling me. I really believe that God wants me to do this. But, but, all this other stuff is just robbing me of my time, of my energy, of my resources. What is keeping you from being what God has called you to be? Because God is here, ready to make a great exchange. To take your mess, and your junk, and your burdens, and your cares, so that your hands can be free to take up your cross. Discover your purpose, and live out your destiny.